Hey, what's up, universe? It is 2.22 p.m. on Wednesday, June 7th, 2023. These ideas keep coming up to me, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this out. Um, another thing, the conversation that I had with Milo while we were playing cards last night, and one of the things that I was um, communicating to him was like, look, the reason I do what I do, the reason I parent the way that I do, the reason I live my life the way that I do is so that I can model something that is extremely important to me. It's actually paramount, and I'm willing to sacrifice pretty much everything for it. <clears throat> and it's personal sovereignty. And I said, it's not just for me. I said, Milo, I said, I have to model this for you so that you have this connection to your own agency, to your own authority. To me, that is paramount. It's more important than anything, and I will sacrifice our relationship for it. You know, I was like, because what's most important to me, and I won't necessarily, like, I'll, I'll maybe, I don't want to say sacrifice, but I think I may have actually said that. I was like, I'm willing to do that because it's that important to me. Meaning that, like, I will make choices to model sovereignty for my children instead of choosing to go down the traditional parenting path. Because to me, ultimately, when I'm gone, I need to feel like I did my best to empower my children to be strong, individual, self-loving people. To not be discordant within themselves, to be okay with whatever the hell their truth is. If that is what I can give them, I will absolutely sacrifice my relationship with them to give them that. Because it's rather, it's rather selfish for me to be like, oh, I'd rather keep our relationship and like have you be disempowered so that we can have a relationship. I was telling him, I was like, look, I have a choice here, which is either I honor my own truth, okay, and I live my life according to my truth, or, and I, and I accept all of the consequences from that, and I have a responsibility towards that, or... I can abdicate and like dishonor my truth in the hopes that somebody might feel better. That's not a guarantee, by the way. It's not. It's not. Totally not a guarantee. I could, I could do self-harm to myself, which is not honoring my truth because I view not honoring my truth as a form of self-harm. So I can harm myself in the hopes that it makes somebody else feel better. I was like, but that's a form of self-harm. I was like, I will never, ever ask you to do that for me. I would never ask you to do that for me, which is exactly why I tell you, even if I don't agree with you, I will always champion your sovereignty. I don't know what your truth is, you know, but I absolutely feel so, so connected to modeling this for you that like, I have to show you what it is and I have to give you that permission. It's okay to have that. It is okay to be this way. One of the things I had to learn after my divorce with Angela is that living this way, I know from traditional modeling and things like this can sound extremely selfish, can seem extremely self-centered and it is to a certain extent. Yet it's to make sure that I am not bringing back into every other relationship, all of these subconscious hooks. Anthony DeMello talks about this in the Book of Awareness too, where he talks about like, is it really selfish to take care of yourself? <clears throat> because if you decide to change yourself to make somebody else happy or somebody else demands that of you, isn't it to make them feel better? Isn't it more selfish of them to make that request? Like, hey, I need you to change so that I feel better. Our whole, like there is so many examples of this in society and that's part of the, the, the anger and frustration and some of my more deeper rooted species level kind of things and why in that first video I was like, I'm working on believing that our species is not dangerous or scary is because in my mind, in my interpretation and in my hallucination of reality, of my experience, there's so much out there about blaming others and and somebody else did this to me or they caused this and it's like that may not have happened if 
our boundaries around our truth were being honored. And which is actually more selfish, right? Because those expressions about like, oh, this person, that, that's, that's, that really has nothing to do with the other person. That's an expression of that individual experiencing that lack of boundary. There is no blaming when you have boundaries. When I had my own trigger and I was blaming the other person about like, dude, you told, what the hell? You told Reese. Mm -mm, that was not that other person. It had nothing to do with that other person, man. Nothing. That was all me. That was all me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I didn't have a boundary. I wasn't honoring my truth. And so I was telling Milo, like, and so that caused me some harm. It caused me some harm in a relationship with an individual that I'm not sure it, who, who that individual is. It also reflected back to me an imbalance within myself around, oh shit, I didn't have a boundary. And because I didn't have a boundary, I was feeling extremely defensive, feral, and very vulnerable. And that was not a healthy internal state for me to be in because I was bringing that back into other relationships. So that's what I'm talking about. Man. I have to model that. I feel such a responsibility towards modeling that. That's way more important to me than like traditional parent-child relationships. Like to me, traditional parent-child relationships are unhealthy. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do my best to not parent that way. Understanding my own boundaries, aligning myself with my truth and honoring that and seeing that in other people and giving other people that permission and that authority and that agency for themselves seems a lot more healthy and empowering to me. And so that's what I look to model. That's, I obviously have a very ardent belief around this. It's, so mu it's very much sovereign individually, like individuality, like nations go to war around like certain things you know like whatever this whole different topic but like you get the idea of sovereignty like it's a boundary i don't i'm not looking to wage war i am looking to create a definition though and be like this this is where this is and i'm okay with that you know like um and i feel like that was a that was a point that he was able to understand and that's one of the things i talk about that i'm looking to give to my children that um you know, that deep connection. And that's exactly why, you know, I allow them to challenge me because again, I might be in a position of authority because I'm the parent. This is all an illusion. It's all an illusion. We are energetic beings. I happen to be the part of what manifested you into this reality, but that doesn't give me any authority over you. Like, you know what I mean? Like I don't control you. I don't own you. Uh, so let me as a spiritual guide, inform you about boundaries and your own personal truth and my experience. And again, I'm not right or wrong. I'm just here to communicate whatever it is I'm meant to communicate and have it land with whoever it's meant to land with. That may or may not be my sons. It may or may not be you. I'm just meant to do what I'm supposed to do and then not allow myself to be manipulated by these hooks that are out there because of because of the models that we've been given you know I, anyway i just felt like that was uh something important to um to put out there as well that um because of how i model that it can seem very cold it can seem very detached it can seem very cerebral It is, an, it is not an ignoring of the emotion. It is not an invalidation of the experience. Like it's 100%, it's actually the opposite. It's, it's, the, it's the integration of all of it. It's understanding and validating the emotion and the experience. And it's about understanding my responsibility and my accountability and how I contributed to that experience so that I can help reconcile this paradox that I might be experiencing and I feel like these things it's very it's a lot and I'm not gonna like, I get it it's a lot and uh, it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to go through examples such as what I just went through and be able to illustrate both for myself for my own self-reflection to share it with you and then also to share it with with my sons or with Milo um, 
I just thought that was uh, something to, to worthy of mentioning. And it was so interesting, I will say. <laughs> Soma uh, from The Essential Man created a, a story today or a video, literally posted probably about maybe 20 minutes ago now. And it just, to me, really resonates with some of the messages that have been coming through to me as well today. So I believe that there are bigger universal energies at play. And those are fun to see. The essential man or the emergent man? I probably, the emergent man, I believe. Yeah, sorry, I may have misspoke. <laughs> All right. I'm not grounded yet. Okay, I love you guys. Thanks for being with me. I'll talk to you later. Bye.